I closed my window, so give me a moment here. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking we. I, I need to get that. Uh, uh, try to find that clip. Get that clip of Bill O'Reilly yelling, you know, "We're doing. We're gonna do it live. F it. We'll do it live." Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I'm almost glad I found I lost my cover because this one is actually more interesting. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, so, for so we had our no hype of a newish movie. Um, then we have our weekly uh, classic movie review. When I mentioned yeah. to my grandparents that I had watched this, I said, "Oh, that was a big movie, wasn't it?" <laughs> yeah. Um... So yeah, we went back to the western genre with you know, gun gunfight at the OK Corral. Gunfight at the OK Corral, based on a true story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so uh, this is of course uh, the uh, the the story of uh, of Wyatt Earp and his brothers and Doc Holliday. Uh, although that's that, that's not near that's in the third act, but uh, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, yeah, so so it isn't so much just about the gunfight, the OK Corral. It's like all the build up up to it. Yeah, it's it's uh, if if you've seen Tombstone with Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer, it's the opposite of that. So like like Tombstone, the the shootout at the OK Corral is at the end of the first act. This movie, it's the climax. Um, so uh, uh, the the movie, of course, it starts off uh, where we meet uh, uh, Doc Holliday, uh, who's uh, who's played by uh, Kirk, uh, Kirk Douglas, uh, the the father of Michael Douglas, uh, and Wait, he yeah. they just establish him as a despicable character from the start. Oh yeah, well uh, well well Doc Holliday, you know he. he he kind of was a, a bit of a reprobate. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to be honest here. Uh, okay, Corral. Part of the reason I was interested in this movie was I realized I knew nothing whatsoever about this. Like mm. I knew the names Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. I had actually assumed that Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday fought each other at the Okay Corral, having wow. never heard anything about it. Yeah, but <laughs> the names and the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I. So, I knew about it, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I knew about it because I, 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 I had seen the, the aforementioned Tombstone a couple of times, uh, which if you have not seen that movie, I highly recommend it. Okay. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, probably the, the uh, no, actually, I would say the best acting performance from Val Kilmer, right? playing Doc Holliday. Um, to be fair, with Val Kilmer... Um... Is there a lot that's actually in the running? Uh, uh, probably not. I, mean, um, I, mean, I guess. Well, maybe uh, maybe the Doors. Although I've I've never seen the Doors. Um, and and played, I was uh, the Top Gun. To, yeah, Top Gun. Yeah. Um, definitely not Batman Forever. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, but but anyway, uh, get back to the uh, to this movie. Um, uh, so we have Doc Holliday, and he's in uh, he's in Griffin, Texas. Which I actually had to go see where Griffin, Texas is. It's right. It's north, or I should say, it's southeast of Dallas, Fort Worth. Okay. Um, it's actually very close to Louisiana border. Um, okay. Uh, but uh, it's but anyway. So he's there, and the, uh, there's a there's a guy there who who wants to. Uh, Wants to wants to kill him because of because of he, Doc Holliday killed his brother, and he's just kind of hanging out in his in his uh, hotel room throwing knives at the door. <laughs> and it's a nice little detail. The door is just covered in gouges from. Like, you, he's been pl clearly playing this game for a while. Yeah, and uh, I, I I hate to be the the owner of that inn when he s sees that door. Like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to replace the whole thing and the frame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and you wonder if, um, like, how they went about doing that. Like, is that just the evidence of how many takes they had done before they got it right? Because he was actually throwing the knife over. This was this was no special effects, as far as I could tell. No, no, yeah, he, he it, it, 
there probably was they probably probably was practice. <laughs> yeah. So like, well, you know, you, you, we have to show that you've been doing that for a while. So just you know. and you got to be able to throw the knife and have it actually hit blade first instead of uh, handle first right. throughout the scene while pretending to drink and berating your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doc has some. He's got. He he's got some serious lady troubles in this movie. Got some demons. Yeah, um, and uh, of course, and then right at that same time, Wyatt Earp shows up in town. And Wyatt Earp is played by Burt Lancaster, and he's looking for uh, Johnny Ringo, who's a, but uh, I would say gun for hire, and uh, the sheriff isn't playing ball with him. Uh, much to Wyatt's chagrin, and so he goes over to the tavern and uh, talks to the, the tavern owner, who offers him a Longhorn steak. Which uh, is, if you if you know anything about long, uh, I don't know, if you know anything about Longhorn meat, uh, it's very lean. Uh, but uh, uh, little things you learn when you live in Texas for majority of your adult life. Um, uh, but. Um, so then he he learns that Doc Holiday is there. Yeah. Go ahead and keep going. Uh, the the cat I'm house sitting is about to destroy the door. So I'll be oh, right okay. <laughs> Speaking of ruined doors. Uh, yes. <laughs> but um. But yeah. So he uh he shows up and then he he hears that Doc Holiday is there and he goes to see Doc Holiday at the hotel. And uh, they had actually met before. They mentioned in the movie they met before. For those of you who don't know, Doc Holliday, the reason he's called Doc Holliday was because he was a dentist. Um, and, uh, and I'm back. All right, welcome back. Yeah. Uh, I hear a cat chirping in the background, but. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I was, I was just saying that uh, Wyatt goes to, to talk to Doc Holliday at the hotel and. Uh, he uh, Wyatt fills him in on a little uh, thing to help him out uh, to, that would help Doc out, and then uh, so but he's expecting something from Doc in return, and uh, Doc doesn't give it to him, and he's like, "Well, we had a deal. Oh, you didn't make uh, you, I, I didn't make a deal with you." <laughs> yeah, you, you said um, while we were, while I was watching it, I was you know, sending you my thoughts that uh, Doc Holiday is Iron Man and. Uh, Wyatt Earp is Captain America, and that's very true. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, the the yeah the yeah the Wyatt Earp, Wyatt's the very straight straight lace straight narrow guy, and Doc Holliday is the I just do whatever I want and kind of kind of guy. Um, the, the other detail about Doc Holliday that kind of explains some of his hopelessness is that he does have this persistent cough through the whole movie. Yeah, uh, uh, he had tuberculosis. Okay, yeah. Which they had no way of doing anything about back then, right? Yeah, um, and uh, so uh, Doc ends up going to the bar, and then uh, he doesn't uh, doesn't shoot the guy because uh, I think the bar owner makes him give up his gun, uh, and then but then he just yep. throws the knife in the it would the the obvious pad that you can see through the guy's shirt. I missed that, but uh, yeah. Uh, so Wyatt and Holiday are portrayed more heroically in this film. Uh, I would say so, yeah. Wyatt is, and Holiday has his moments. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so uh, what ends up happening is uh, the the people in the town want to um, uh, just want to take matters in their own hands with Doc and just you know off them. And Wyatt uh, helps helps him escape, uh, and from there, Doc basically owes, you know, Wyatt his life, um, owes him a life debt. And uh, then we uh, we flash to, um, or was it? They go to um, they go to Dodge City, Texas. Oh, I hear the kitty. Yep, there's the kitty. She's a loud kitty, so just have to bear with it. That's right. I I, I, uh, I I mentioned this to you last week. I had a th that cat's meow sounds a lot like the meow my cat had. That, meow, meow. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, but but enough about cats. Um, the uh, um, yeah. So the so the middle of the movie is them 
uh, is basically uh, Doc Holliday cleans himself up a bit and kind of became becomes Earps, not quite a deputy because he isn't technically a lawman at any point. I still don't think he's was he officially a lawman at any point. He does deputize him at one point because okay. he needs him to go. Uh, they, they had to go get somebody. I can't remember who it was. Um, and uh, so they uh, they go out and ride. Then they sleep outside, and you know they get ambushed, but they but they stop the ambush. Yeah, yeah. And like, uh, I, I think it's like a good example of just a very sort of masculine friendship, where they don't necessarily they, they wouldn't necessarily share their feelings with each other, but they develop this uh, deep loyalty for one another. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, it an un unspoken bond. Yeah. Um, and of course, the other part of it too, uh, or I, I can't remember if it was the before or after that. I think it was before this. Uh, when uh, a, a, a young lady arrives in town, a uh, beautiful redhead, oh, who's, yeah. Uh, yeah, who's a, a card player like Doc Holliday. And uh, of course, Wyatt's got a rule, you know, no, you know, women, women can't gamble. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're doing a masculine thing right now, I think was something like the line. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was, that's yeah. right. you're, you're not, a, that's right. You 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 can't speak that way to a lady. You're playing cards. You're no lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie is very old fashioned. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, so he ends up arresting her, and then uh, it, but then Doc persuades persuades Wyatt to let her go, and he does. And uh, they they have a little Wyatt and the I can't remember her name. Laura. 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 That sounds right. You can call her Red if you just start her. Right, right, yeah. Uh, they uh, they end up, they end up having a little like May December romance. Uh, yeah, and uh, also it occurs to me you can tell how distinctive redheaded people are. Like no one ever would call somebody with raven hair black, or no one would ever call someone with a brunette hair brown. Right. Uh, yeah. Just redhead and blondie. Like you know, hey, yo red, yo blondie. Like those You're are like right. the only. You can tell that those are rare hair colors because of uh, <laughs> the fact that they can become somebody's whole nickname. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah. So they um, they they also run into another foul of some of real a real shady guy and comes into town and tries to uh, uh, yeah. cause. Nope, a lot you of chose trouble. to come in in the middle of the podcast, so you're you're in. Yeah, <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what um, did you think of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, so uh, uh, what was his name? Shanghai Bob, I think was his name. Yeah, Sh Shanghai something. I thought yeah. was a unique nickname. Right, and and the guy is and, and the guy with the nickname is clearly not from Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that it's because of the old term uh, Shanghai. So uh, right. maybe he was like a kidnapper or something. Right. Yeah. Or maybe he was uh, one of those guys like he took one trip to Shanghai as like a when he was like in the Navy or something, and he just never shut up about it for the rest of his life. Like like some people go to Europe and that becomes their entire personality. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. But uh, but yeah. So uh, he shows up and is causing trouble and. Uh, Wyatt and Doc have to have to get rid of him, uh, and I think uh, Johnny Ringo, who was uh, Wyatt, was uh, going after, uh, was with the guy, and um, and Johnny Ringo is also with uh, with uh, uh, Doc Holliday's on again, off again girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, he's cleaned himself up, and she's like, "You think you're better than me now?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, who played her, by the way? I don't know. She kind of looked familiar, but I can't. IMDb. Can. Yes, IMDb. Let me uh, let's see. Uh, gunfight. Gunfight at the OK. okay Corral. So, yeah, so in case you're wondering, what the hell are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Rhonda Fleming, I think. Rhonda, Fle Rhonda Fleming. Uh, oh, no, that, no, no. Rhonda Fleming the red. was uh, the redhead. Okay. Um, well then, uh, man, the poor blonde girl does not get top billing on IMDb. Uh, 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 Joe Van Fleet. Yeah, she was putting on a. I felt like she was putting on a very um, 
not, not quite forced is the term I would put for it, but like uh, very much an, a fake accent. Yeah. Like she was talking very like lower class Southern, but she kind of had promised that she had that good actress diction. So it kind of sounded oh. strange at times. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, she was in East of Eden. Uh, Mod Squad. Yeah. The gang that couldn't shoot straight, which uh, IMDb gives a rousing 4.9 out of 10. Ooh. Oh, she was in Cool Hand Luke. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, not not a big name actress. It would seem no, but uh, I will say that you you believed the the scenes with her and Doc Holliday that like, they had like some sort of toxic chemistry with each other, where they clearly <laughs> were something to, to each other. But they both took an attempt at stabbing the other one at least once in the movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, uh, um, yeah, like. Yeah, it, yeah. If they were if they were alive today, and the, you saw them, like, oh man, that is one toxic codependent relationship there. Yeah. Oh. So, so somebody needs some therapy, and maybe we need to get uh, the government involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah. So then, um, why it is? Uh, oh yeah. I was gonna say, oh, I was gonna say like, I would class I would categorize the movie up to this point as like the setup for the gunfight. Right. Yeah. And uh, and. At first, Wyatt is getting ready to uh, quit his job as a lawman, and then he and, and the redhead, Grant Red, are going to move off to California and start a new life together. But then Wyatt gets a, a telegram from, uh, from his brother in, uh, in Tombstone saying he needs his help. And so he goes off to Tombstone, and then Doc joins him. Uh, and uh, yeah, so basically, it's the the Clanton family are are given Wyatt's uh, three brothers a uh, really hard time. Uh, and one of uh, one of the brothers, uh, Virgil, was played by uh, DeForest Kelly. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, which which is like, wait a second, you'd even mentioned he was in the movie, but I wasn't sure what he was going to be. But like, wait a minute, I know that voice. He just sounds ten years younger than I'm used to him at the at the youngest. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. He was he was around our age when he was in that movie. It's okay, kind of hard to believe, but yeah, you know. But people lived harder lives back then, and were much more aged looking. That's true. Yeah, and I, and I believe he was a pretty heavy smoker too. So, um, but uh, but yeah, and they. Uh, what kind of doctor is he? Who? Not a miracle worker, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, he wasn't a miracle or or a bricklayer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but um, but uh, but yeah. So uh, they uh, they end up there. And they end up in they're in Tombstone, and then yeah, like like DB was saying, things have built up to this point. Uh, built built up to there, and then um, then one night, uh, one of Wyatt's brothers, actually I think his youngest brother, uh, Morgan, I believe that's I think it was yeah, Morgan. Who I believe Wyatt had tried to talk out of his life of crime. Right. Oh no, no, that was um, one of the Clantons. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it, one, it was the Clanton kid. Uh, it was played by De uh, Dennis Hopper. Okay. A very young, a very young Dennis Hopper. Oh, wow, I never even, I, I did not recognize it because I never even thought of Dennis Hopper ever being young. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was yeah, that was kind of startling to see him like that. But uh, but yeah, it was um, uh, his. Uh, I want to say it was the youngest uh, brother who was. Uh, had a had a gal in he had a gal in California that he was always thinking about and and then uh, uh, one night uh, the the Clintons ambush uh, actually I think they're probably meant to kill Wyatt but then they ended up killing uh, killing Morgan and um, Wyatt makes more sense to try to kill since he's the lawman who's going to cause trouble right um, but uh, but they. Uh, but they kill his brother, and so now, uh, now it's personal, and that's when they set up the uh, the whole uh, meet him at the at the OK Corral. Yep. Now I, I looked this up. Historically, it took about th the actual gunfight at the OK Corral took about thirty seconds. Yeah. Uh, my grandparents actually had been out there before when I mentioned I had seen this movie, and they had seen the recreation of it. They said, "Yeah, about thirty seconds." <laughs> yeah, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't last very long. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
the other thing, and I said, you know, that's realistic. You know, if you have a bunch of guys at point blank range with six shooters, unless everybody's aim is awful, it's going to get resolved one way or the other pretty quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the, the character beats were kind of interesting because you know it was Doc had had a relapse of his tuberculosis, so it was just in in sorry shape. Yeah. But he has to, you know, get you know, even as his codependent girlfriend is begging him to stay. No, I, you know, you and I, we don't matter for nothing, but he does. Yeah, yeah, because he says, yeah, he says, Wyatt is the the closest friend he, the closest friend he, or uh, the closest thing to a friend he's ever had. Yeah, and and then uh, Wyatt, on the other hand, is dealing with, uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, you know, he's a lawman, but he's out for revenge that day. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. Uh, uh, great conflict within him yeah like this movie is very much a melodrama it's mm -hmm. a very well acted melodrama oh yeah 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 well yeah yeah uh yeah, yeah. Lancaster, Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas yeah they were you yeah. know top actors of that of that time yeah uh, uh Ninja says he thinks uh, Virgil's murder happened after the gunfight historically the story of Wyatt Earp has a lot more gray in it yeah I've I've that surprised me yeah that surprised me yeah I I know a little bit about it but not a lot yeah yeah now now from a historical perspective historical perspective yeah like he's he's being portrayed as a boy scout here yeah who, who has like a one lapse of judge or one really big lapse of judgment um yeah. But from like a dramatic perspective, it makes a much sharper contrast with him and Doc Holliday as these unlikely friends and allies. So yeah. I'll allow it. <laughs> yes, I, I, I will too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I, I think this was um, you know, I, I, I after watching this movie and then the shootist a couple of weeks ago, I can I can see why westerns were so popular for as long as they were. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's because it's, uh, it's it's a nice kind of low tech setting. Like nobody's getting the better on the other guy because they have the better kit, right? It is about reflexes, skill, and gumption. Yeah, and you have varying characters with varying backgrounds and different, you know, moralities and and uh, different codes, and it makes it it makes for much more interesting storytelling. Right, and that's, that is the nice thing about westerns is that as long as they could, as long as a character could realistically have been in the Wild West in the 19th century, you can give them any background you like. Yeah. And if you're doing a neo western, you know, you pick the right time and place. You could have a Chinese person or a Japanese person who came to work on the railroads, or yeah. you could have you know someone from Ireland who came because of the potato famine. You could have, uh, or just you know the big waves of Irish immigration that were happening in general. Right. Yeah. You could have uh, you could have someone from the northeast. You could you could have you can have civil war veterans from either either side dealing with the outcomes of that war. Yeah. Very rich history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember um, he, uh, speaking of civil war. Yeah, I remember Wyatt mentioning uh, two his two brothers fought in the civil war. Yeah, and uh, th that's another thing. Uh, now, did Wyatt, was Wyatt on the north or the south side? Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I, mean, I guess it depends on if they were from Texas or not. Like, if he was actually from Texas, then almost surely uh, Confederate. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned that because uh, they mentioned that Doc Holliday's family was from Georgia, so you know what side they were on, right. and that, how they lost everything after the war, and they put everything together to put him through dental school, and boy, did that pay off. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why he was Doc Holliday. Yeah. But, uh, and I really liked, so non-spoiler thing, you know, good movie. It's on Paramount Plus. It's free. Go watch it. It's, it's a good time. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Spoiler moment. After uh, Doc gets his revenge, I really liked the moment where he just drops his uh, sheriff's star. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, like, he's a good man who did a bad thing, and his morals are such that, you know, he knows that he's lost the right to wear it. Right. Yeah. It. Um, yeah. It was sort of like. Um, well, it, it was like the ending of. Um, uh, oh, uh, Ninja says uh, uh, Republican papers generally supported Wyatt Earp. Democrat papers hated. Okay, so he was. He's more of a union, type, at least a union flavored kind of guy. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that yeah that that reminded me of. Um, 
it was it's similar to in Dirty Harry when uh, when he throws his at the end of the movie when he throws his badge yeah. away. And and for that matter, to bring up the Captain America and uh, Iron Man thing, it did it did kind of make me think of Civil War. <laughs> yeah. Right, the morally up upright one um, made a questionable choice because of his personal loyalties. Right, and then and yeah, and then he he gives Stark back his Stark the shield back because he said, you know, my my father made that shield. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It's it, it is kind of interesting how uh, in those Marvel movies, uh, it started off with Tony as the as the selfish guy who became less selfish over time. And arguably, Captain America became the most selfish of them all by the end of it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, well, well, yeah. The the, the 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 I mean, he did go back in time, and you know, so that he could to bone Peggy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> although, although you know, uh, who could blame him? <laughs> yes. Who among us wouldn't screw over the space time continuum? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> anyway, uh, that. But enough of that diversion. Uh, yeah, I, I would just. Uh, I mean, that, that's my overall take on it. Is that it's a well acted movie. The one thing that's kind of funny is the soundtrack. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, this was in the the era of movies where every single movie, like people associate it with James Bond to have a theme song with the title of the movie over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was all of them. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, go around. Boot Hill, Boot Hill. Yes. <laughs> oh man, I don't know who sang it, but it's it sounded like uh, one of the classic Western guys. Like it's a very classic style song. Oh yeah. And I, what do you want to bet they sold like a million singles of that thing? <laughs> that oh was, yeah, probably. Yeah. That was like a catchy song. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and it just says he would he'd save Joan of Arc. Yeah, and then, yeah. With Joan of Arc, and this might be a story idea somebody could pursue. Um, it's not like like if you just snatch her out of the fire before anybody notices, then uh, yeah, you can have a minimal impact on history. That's true. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I I, I I I agree. Give this movie a watch. Um, yeah, you'll. Um, uh, I think uh, younger me probably wouldn't have liked it because it was too talky, but um, yeah. older me appreciates it. Appreciate yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's definitely. Uh, it definitely felt like it was of an of an age. Like uh, I can't. I, I at the opening where they had the big presented in Vista Vision. I said <laughs> there were other Vista Vision movies than uh, White Christmas because that's the only movie I've ever seen that has that opening. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> but uh, don't expect anything even remotely approaching modern sensibilities. Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but it's just a, a couple of powerhouse actors, uh, and the fight scenes were exciting. I actually had the volume on my TV too high, but I had a cat on my lap, and I didn't have access to the volume. So oh. <laughs> good, good uh, gun sound effect works. Actually, there are like you know some movies you watch, it's like the pew pew sound for the yeah. gun. Now, these were booming explosions when they were firing their guns. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They 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 put uh, they they give it all in the in this movie. Yeah, with the effects. Yeah, yeah. Or at least the yeah the foley work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was a nice spontaneous choice when we were going through our different streaming services. So yes, yeah. do not regret it. I I don't either. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think we have uh, we've uh, exhausted these these topics as much as we can. Yes. Uh, so, uh, overall conclusion: uh, Elemental is okay. This movie's better, but yes. your kids will probably like Elemental better. Yeah, indeed. Um, <laughs> all right. Well. Um, uh, uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate it as That's always. Great. Yeah. Uh, give 